Good afternoon. This is Studio Sense. Tracks in the Snow is the winter painting that we will discuss. There's a blog on my website that walks through the steps that you'll see here in today's presentation. And here's our Studio Sense pastel painting tips and demos. So this is a reference photo. It was a clear sky about 4 p.m. late in the afternoon. The shadows are really strong. This is Marshview Meadow Park. Uh, near Saline, just south of Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's kind of a boring picture. What I kind of liked about this, though, was that it was a very simple picture. And the lines throughout the um, photograph really caught my attention. So I wanted to design a painting and have the lines help support and build the composition of the painting. And we could see the lines. The lines are on the left, for example, the gully that tracks through and up and to the hill and to the snowy hill where the uh, weeds and the, you know, the growth is and the rocks, the lines of the distant level of the snow plain and how it meets up with the hill on the left. And look at the tree line. So the tree line starts high on the right and drifts downward uh, to the left. Um, and the sky being obviously the opposite. It was a deep blue sky. And the good thing about what I'll show later on is the simplicity of this design and the, the sky itself, which we were going to leave, we're going to leave perfectly blue so it doesn't kind of clutter anything else up in this particular um, piece of art. So we're trying to take somewhat of a boring picture and turning it into something more exciting. The shadows, of course, uh, will be fantastic in a winter scene on a blue sky. And of course, the other lines in here are lots of them and they are footsteps of, of what looked like a pretty crowded visit that day uh, at Marshview Meadow Park. So this is how we start. This is the preparation now. Now all artists need to do their homework. And the homework here is, first of all, looking at a reference photo and saying, okay, what is it about that particular photo that would cause me to create a piece of art and that would be appealing to others? So you gotta do your homework. And, and the what, what I do, and I recommend that all artists do, and many certainly do, is to create three different, uh, conceptualizations of the painting. First of all, the lines in this painting, as I mentioned, that was one of the reasons why I decided to paint this particular scene, is how I could configure the lines to create a pleasing composition. And you'll notice there are no lines that are breaking up the painting in half, for example. The top line there um, representing the edge of the um, snow field is, of course, angled. The, the gully is angled and and the, and the footsteps are going to be kind of all over the place. That's that squiggly line there on the right. And the, and the, the horizontal or somewhat horizontal slash diagonal line above that, that's the dark shaded area of the snow. So, so what we'll do is then the next step is to do a value sketch. You want your darks and your lights laid out in such a way that it will help you select the values of the pastels. You want to kind of keep it true to the value of the, um, reference photo. Uh, and we'll get more into that later on because we're going to get into some grayscale comparisons to show you how you could check the value of your piece of, uh, piece of work. So there's the value sketch in the middle showing basically the darks, the lights, and the grays, uh, the midtone values. And then the noton, which is really just picking two values, <laughs> really black and white. And it's showing where if you really just squint at a scene, and you look at a landscape with squinting eyes, you could see really the really brings out the simplicity of the scene, the darks and the lights, the masses that would be uh, in the picture um, by squinting. So try that every so often and, and, and you really see, this is what we wanna convey in the initial design of the painting, um, in the structure of the composition and where you're placing those masses. So now um, we're bringing on the pastels. This is a um, sketch in blue pastel. It was very hard blue pastel. And uh, following this sketch, I, I um, applied an alcohol wash to darken it up a bit. And these are representing the darkest values in the painting. Again, the tree line in the back, the gully, the gully that's going up there, and then also the shaded area that you see, uh, the shadowed areas of snow. 
And, and I use blue for two reasons. First of all, the snow was very blue. The sky had a blue cast in the sky because obviously it was a clear sky. If the sky was cloudy or if the sky was pink or yellowish or orangish, those colors would reflect in the snow. So you'd use a lot more of those types of colors uh, in your painting. Um, and then we're going to bring on additional colors, purples, pinks, orange, blue, greens will come into play. You'll notice that we leave white behind. There's a little bit of white in the final painting, but very little bit of that. And, and really, this is a great opportunity for the artist to, to express um, a lot of using a lot of variety of different hues, but also keeping the temperature, the warmth and the cool temperatures of the painting consistent and in the, and then in the proper spots. So now we get started even further, get more pastels out, a, pal a palette was selected, browns and ochres and orange, and of course the blues, and there's some purples in there too, and pinks. And I put all these palettes in a simple uh, tray and work them, their warm, warm colors and cool versions of those particular hues. Define the tree horizon. Um, so that was done first, really the darkest part of the um, darkest value of the painting. Now, of course, the lightest value of the painting is the snow on a clear blue sky. There's the clear sky, nothing to distract it. If I threw clouds in there, for example, I, I think that would distract some of the shadow work that we're going to create down in the snow, as well as the rocks and the other vegetation that's popping out of the snow. So you really go back and forth at this point. Uh, I defined the gully further down the lower lower picture here. Um, I've also put in some of the uh, plants, the, some of the ochres and, the, and the, the weeds that were growing in that gully. And that was not, that gully was just an indentation in the hill. It was not a stream, for example. Um, so it's really simple. And we were kind of at this point, kind of really working up a rough draft of the uh, final painting. Now's a, now's a, a fun part also is, is as you're working a painting and a pastel, what you want to do is, as, art, as, as we say in art, we, we have to try to get the values right. If you get the values right, you can paint a painting in almost totally different colors that do not even represent the scene, and it'll still look pretty cool because the values are correct. The darks and the lights are correct. The top picture here is the grayscale version of the reference photograph. So a simple digital photo. Uh, software on your on your PC, your laptop, will be able to create a grayscale image of the painting. And the bottom one is the grayscale version of the painting work in progress. Now, you'll notice that the bottom one is lighter than the top one, but the relative values are correct. So the darker darkest in the photo are the darkest in the painting, and the midtones are the midtones consistent between top and bottom. I wanted to emphasize more the late day light. It was a really strong sunlight um, from the, from the obviously from the west because it was 4 p.m. Uh, and it was a, a early January day, but it was really brilliant shining on that particular hill. So I wanted to uh, um, notch up the, the, uh, the light value of the snow further. Um, and again, moving the composition pieces around a bit, there's some shifts in terms of how I placed the footsteps in the snow, et cetera, or, or, the, um, or the vegetation. And that would have an impact on changing where the values are placed. But again, we wanted to do the relative value check here. And I thought it looked pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So we kind of went on and continued, continued the painting. This is the uh, finale. So this is the tracks in the snow. Uh, it was fun to do. Um, took a couple of, uh, a few, a few uh, studio sessions. If you read the blog about this, a little more detail on that than in this presentation. And you'll see that um, there were um, a couple of, uh, two or, yeah, two or three sessions, one just planning the painting. Uh, the second, we kind of getting it initially set up in terms of the basic blocking and tackling of the main values. And then the third one is really refining the painting. So that's Tracks in the Snow. Go to the website and you could look at the, revisit this and, and see more details about the uh, steps in the painting and, 
And certainly at some point, once our technicians are ready to uh, set up the live studio, we'll have some live demos of, of some of these paintings that I'm creating. I'm really excited to be out here in uh, uh, Michigan winter wonderland. So we're looking for some more snow, hopefully, and there'll be plenty more opportunities uh, to capture um, various snow scenes. Information uh, about myself, where to find my uh, uh, website, uh, how to email me, again, the blog. Um, is very detailed and there's lots of lessons on the blog and a number of those lessons will be converted into videos and presentations in the next uh, several months. Uh, there's a shop online that uh, th this painting is is for sale as others and please follow me on Instagram. I'm posting a new painting a week. We do a painting a week. I do a painting a week and uh, and it's great to see a lot of other um, artists who post their paintings and there's, uh, there's a lot to learn and a lot to see um, out there. Uh, in terms of the art world. So hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Go uh, work on your winter paintings and uh, and we'll be going through all the other seasons too. Thanks.